Hey everyone, it is Gabe from Babylon Journey, and we are diving into the very first episode of the series, which just gets into kind of the setup of a pretty simple scene, but my hope is just to show you that even in 30, 40, 50 lines of code, we can already make something pretty cool, which is this scene right in front of us, which is going to have a little skybox around the scene, a 3D model with a little rotation on it, and even a little bit of reflectivity on that model to give it a little sparkle. Okay, and to do that, we're gonna get into just a few concepts, concepts that are gonna be some of the building blocks we use in all of the episodes, things like the Babylon engine, the scene, a camera, and so forth. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm excited. Okay, now the way these uh, episodes are going to work, for each episode, I'm gonna put in the YouTube description two links. One is gonna be a link to the starting uh, code sandbox, which you can just fork and then use. Uh, to kind of follow along. And the other one is going to be the final code sandbox that is, uh, you know, what I end up doing by the end of the episode. So you can kind of follow along by forking the first sandbox and building it yourself. But if you just want to see the end result and fork that and modify it, you know, bring in your own model or do whatever you want, uh, you can do that too, either way. Okay, now the setup I've done in the starting code sandbox is pretty straightforward. I've imported uh, the Babylon library. Like we, we gotta make sure we load Babylon into the project. Now you can do this, by the way, with an HTML script. It's no problem, I'm just used to doing it with NPM packages. So I've brought in um, brought in the, a, a couple dependencies that I know that we need, like Babylon core and Babylon loaders uh, for loading in my uh, 3D model. Now I've also set up uh, an index HTML with really not a whole lot besides, I mean, this kind of just came with Code Sandbox, I think. I'll just rename this to Babylon Journey 1. Uh, besides a canvas, you need a canvas in the, uh, in the DOM to hook the Babylon scene into. It kind of needs a canvas. So I made a canvas and I gave it an ID, render canvas. I have a very simple CSS setup with just two styles. Um, on that canvas, uh, render canvas, I've made it the, hundred like hundred percent of the vertical and horizontal uh, width and height of the viewport and then of course I've brought in two assets in the assets folder of the directory one is a uh, 3d model and the other one is a, a .env file which we'll get into in another lesson but just so you know that's kind of that forest skybox background that you saw in the scene all right let's get building it's already been two and a half minutes uh, and I want to rip through this. Fun fact, I had made this video uh, you, two days ago and it was 20 minutes long. And I thought, this is, I got to redo this. Just make it simpler, quit rambling as much. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> All right. The first thing we want to do, I'm in our JavaScript file now, index.js. Well, we need to hook into that canvas. Remember I mentioned we made a canvas here uh, in the index HTML. We got to hook into that in our JavaScript. So let's make a variable. Uh, reference to it. I'm just going to call make a constant uh, canvas equals and we'll do a document get element by ID and the ID we gave it was render canvas. So that'll actually get our canvas for us, a reference to the canvas. Before I go on, I also did do some things in this file, forgot to mention, but I've imported a bunch of things I know I'm going to need from the Babylon library and I've imported my assets as well. Okay, now I've got my canvas. Now the next thing we need is an engine. And let me explain a little bit about the engine. First of all, here's how easy it is to make the engine. This is a class from the Babylon library. It's just new engine. <laughs> it's just a class constructor and you've got to pass in your canvas. And for the second argument, I'm gonna pass in true. And if you're thinking, well, Gabe, what is that argument? Friendly tip, of course, hover over it in code sandbox and you'll see all the nice uh, arguments. This one, this parameter, is for anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing can kind of make the scene look a little less rough around the edges, a little smoother. So I've gone ahead and turned that on. Okay, now what the heck is an engine? Well, without, I'm gonna simplify things a little bit. Uh, what you need to think about, taking a step back, is Babylon JS and other frameworks like this, like 3JS and so forth, they interface with lower level APIs uh, that are in the browser, things like WebGL, um, and the new version of that is, uh, well, the recent one is WebGL2. Coming up is WebGPU, which we're gonna get into more, I promise. But the point is, if we were to write this with raw uh, WebGL code, 
We're talking hundreds, if not thousands of lines of code. Even in WebGPU, where this stuff is easier, it would take like 50 lines of code just to put a triangle or two up in the scene. The point is you don't want to be writing uh, WebGL code unless you are a lot smarter than I am, in which case you might still not want to be writing it. <laughs> but we're using Babylon because it's an abstraction on top of WebGL that lets us leverage WebGL APIs without needing to write raw WebGL code. The engine, to get back to my point, the engine in Babylon is kind of that interface between Babylon and those lower level WebGL APIs. Very important. So you need it, you know, you, you, you need it. Now, the other thing we need is a scene. This is like uh, another kind of fundamental building block. We need a scene. It's a class, just like engine, just new scene. And for this one though, we pass in the engine we just made. And we don't need this little line in there. So there we go. We've already made an engine and we've made a scene. A scene is kind of like the container for everything that's going to get rendered. I'm not explaining that super well, but you know everything's going to be part of this scene. Okay, now we can't look at anything unless we're looking at things through a particular perspective. And the way that you set that perspective is with a camera. So we need a camera, easy enough. Um, we're gonna make another constant called camera. And this is gonna be an arc rotate camera. This is a class in the Babylon library. I've already imported it, see? And we're just gonna say new arc rotate camera. Now what is an arc rotate camera? Well, it's this kind of camera that rotates around uh, a particular vector in space um, or an, another target like this model. Uh, there are lots of other cameras uh, in Babylon. They have a lot of classes and you can always switch between them and you know, kind of change them on the fly, what have you. But we want to use this one uh, and the arc rotate camera from Babylon is very good, just out of the box camera. Now I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to initialize you know, some of these other parameters with some values that I know are good. This is kind of setting up like what is it looking at when it's first created? What is its rotation relative to its target? These are these numbers. We'll get into this more with a dedicated uh, lesson on cameras, but for now, feel free to toy with these to see how it affects it. You'll see it affects like kind of how high it is or uh, how wide it is relative to the target. And I'm just setting the target right now to be the vector 0, 0, 0 which I'm doing by making a new vector three uh, right here in the constructor for arc rotate camera. And again, you can look at all of these parameters in detail and what they do just by hovering over arc rotate camera. Really well documented. Okay, lovely. We've got our engine, we've got our scene, and we've got our camera. And you're gonna see these things all the time uh, throughout the other episodes. Now, we actually need something to appear in the scene itself. Right. Um, what good is a camera if it's not looking at anything? Not much. So first, let's attach our camera to the canvas that we made before. We need to do this so that the scene kind of knows like the camera should be responding when you interact with this canvas, right? We set this canvas to be you know full width, full height. And once you attach the camera to a canvas with this attach control method, that's you actually hooking up the camera to the canvas so that when you drag on it, the camera moves or uh, does other behaviors. Okay, lovely. Now we need something to look at. So let's make our little forest like skybox thing that you know is going to be in that final result. So this is a really cool helper method that Babylon makes uh, on the scene class and it's called create default environment. And there's a lot you can do in here. We're gonna do two things in particular. We're gonna set the environment texture. I'll explain what this is in a second. We're gonna pass in our forest that we imported from our assets folder. And we're also gonna set the sky box texture. Okay? And that's also gonna be the forest. Now, so what's going on with these two things? The environment texture is what gives the helmet that reflectivity, right? PBR materials that uh, can be reflective like that. If you have an environment texture set up, that's what they hook into as their source for the reflection. And then the skybox texture is actually what makes the forest show up in the scene itself, like outside of the 3D model. So these two things combined, they give us that, uh, that forest background and that reflectivity. Very cool. Now, 
to actually get the scene to render at all uh, in the engine, we need to run the render loop of the engine. Engine run render loop, and you pass in a function. And inside the render loop, we just need to render the scene with the render method. This will actually like take it, you know, make it so that those pixels uh, show up. Now let's save this. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like just yet. And let's refresh our preview. Oh, and there we have it. Um, there is our forest. And you see this faint little ground on the bottom there? This is actually a ground that Babylon makes for you uh, when you do the create default environment function. You can change it, you can remove it, blah, blah, blah. It's there, I don't mind it, so I'm gonna leave it. But you can see we've got our uh, forest kind of skybox set up and it's uh, set up kind of like a, like a cube map. If you zoom out, you can see it's actually a cube map there. But when you're in here like this, you can't really notice that cubey aspect of it. Uh, only when you zoom out. Okay, and and look, our uh, camera. You see, it's rotating uh, around, like because it's an arc rotate camera. Okay, lovely. Now back to. Oop, I was getting ahead of myself there with the end result. We're still we're still here. All right. So how do we get that nice three D model into the space? Well, um, let's use a method on the scene loader class, which I have. Uh, I've imported, it's along for the ride. Um, it's along for the ride in our imports, okay? So we're gonna do scene loader, and, scene loader and we're gonna do import mesh async. And this method takes a few uh, parameters here. This one can just be null because it's like a, you know, just in case you get a bunch of meshes back, you can put a filter here so that it, you, you only reference one of them. Uh, this is where we actually pass in the reference to your model. So if you're playing with this sandbox and you want to play with your own model, you would change this import and then change this import here, right? Instead of my damaged helmet, you'd bring in something else. Um, this argument is can be null because of the way that we're importing the model uh, with a reference, not with a like URL or something. And then finally, you pass in the scene, and then it's an async method, so it it's a promise, like it returns a promise. And then we uh, get our helmet model. And then this returns an array of meshes. So we want to reference the first one, which will be zero because it's an array. And zero is the kind of first element in the array. And let's, um, well, you know, first, even before we do this, let's actually see just what this looks like with our model in our preview. Refresh. Ooh, nice. Snazzy. Look, it's already getting the reflectivity because we set the environment texture, but it's kind of intersecting with this ground, which I don't like too much. So let's raise it up a little bit. Let's bring it, let's bring its position up by two. Okay. Now, the reason why I did position.y is because in Babylon, you have to remember we're working in 3D now. So we've got three dimensions to work with, x, y, and z. Now x, I kind of think of as like this horizontal axis, like side by side, y is up or down, and z is depth, forward or backwards. This is a gross simplification of working in a 3D <laughs> coordinate space, but I don't care. Uh, we're gonna get into it more in the future, but for now, just think, you know, uh, the y axis, like up and down. And I'm when the model came in, it started at the origin point, zero, zero, zero. I want it to go up two. So I cranked my y position two. Okay, moving on. Now our camera, you remember the arc rotate camera can take a target and it's got a method on it, set target, where you can set its target as you might guess. And we want to pass in our, uh, our helmet. Awesome. And now, as you can see, not only will our helmet hopefully be up off the ground, but the camera will actually be rotating around it. Perfect, look at that, gorgeous, right? Now the only other thing we have yet to do is add that little fancy spinning animation. And the way that we're gonna do that is uh, pretty cool. We're gonna put a, 
we're going to use um, we're going to use this function here, which is on before render observable. And let me tell you a bit about this. So basically, Babylon has observables that you can hook into. There are mesh observables, there are scene observables. You can write your own custom observables, which we're going to get into later. But one of the observables on the scene is this on before render. It's basically saying, look, before every frame gets rendered, you can hook into it to run some code. So code that you want to have happen very frequently, this is a good place for it. You also want to be concerned not to put too much stuff in it necessarily, because that can bog down performance. It's, it's code that's executing very frequently. But in this case of a nice smooth animation, this is the place to do it uh, because it's an update that runs so frequently. So what I want to do very simply is grab the helmet the way that we have been. And there's a rotate method on the mesh class, which is what this ends up being, uh, a mesh. We're going to rotate it. And we're going to pass in this rotate method takes a vector three um, for the first uh, argument. And first you set the axis that you want it to rotate on. I want the y axis. And the way you do that is just by 0, 1, 0. If you wanted it to be x, it would be 1, 0, 0. And z would be 0, 0, 1. And uh, you also pass in kind of how much you want it to change uh, with each on each update. I'm going to do 0 0.001. It's pretty good. But you know what? Let's do one for starters. We'll do one. See how that is. I think it's going to be a little too, <laughs> okay. a little too fast. So right, let's dial that down. We're going to go 0 0.001. See how it looks now. Okay, nice and smooth. Lovely. So hopefully you've seen just with 35 lines of code, uh, me rambling a little bit, a few building blocks, engine, scene, camera, uh, the use of a few assets, and that handy create default environment function, we've, able to, we've been able to make something pretty cool. Now, we're going to get into all of these topics in more detail. I kind of just wanted to show you how you could do a lot with a little using some of those helper functions and just give a gentle introduction to some of these concepts. We're going to be building on all of these in the episodes ahead. In the next one, we're going to get into lights. I can't wait to see you there. Uh, good luck. And reminder, the link to the code sandbox, uh, the before, where it's just the boilerplate with nothing filled in, and the after, where you can just get this scene uh, directly to mess with it, you'll have them both in the YouTube link description. All right, see you next time.